Welcome to C6 Church Online. If you are a guest today, we are excited to have you join us. We trust that this will be a meaningful time for you. Great news! We will be returning to physical gatherings as a church on June 21st. Our service time will remain at 10.30 a.m. We will be meeting at the Boys and Girls Club facility at Empower Campus. It is the former school for the deaf. The address is 2001 East A Street here in Sioux Falls. Thanks for taking the survey we sent out. We will be taking precautions to help prevent the spread of COVID-19. There will be a prayer meeting at the same venue next Sunday, the 14th of June at 10.30 a.m. Please join us for that prayer meeting if you are comfortable doing so and not sick. The teaching for that Sunday will still be available online at 10.30 and at other times. Just before I turn it over to Pastor Zach, one way you can worship the Lord today is with your gifts and offerings. Let's look at Luke chapter 6, verse 38 to be inspired by God's word. Give and you will receive. Your gift will return to you in full. Press down, shaken together to make room for more, running over and poured into your lap. The amount you give will determine the amount you give back. You can give by simply going online to c6church.com or texting the word GIVE to 940-236-0778. You can also mail a check to C6 Church, 2601 South Minnesota Avenue, Suite 105, PMB 360, Sioux Falls, South Dakota, 57105. Relax and enjoy the service. Hi, my name is Zach Ochoga, and I'm the lead pastor of C6 Church here in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. And I'm excited to come your way today. I'm excited to have you join us for this time of teaching, time of service online today. If you are a part of C6 Church, welcome. If you are our guest, I want to particularly welcome you and tell you, hey, I'm really excited to have you uh, a part of our service today. And I trust God that this would be a meaningful time for you today. I'm going to just say a word of prayer here quickly, and we'll, we will dive into what God has for us today. Let us pray. Father in heaven, I thank you for today. I thank you for this opportunity to speak your word, teach your word, share your word with all of my listeners. I pray that it will be a life-changing moment for each person, oh God, listening to me at this moment. In Jesus' name, I pray. And everyone says, Amen. Once more, thank you for being a part of today's teaching. We are starting a brand new series today titled Peter's Letters to You. Wisdom and hope in tough times. Wisdom and hope in tough times. Peter's letters to you. So we're actually going to be going th- we're actually going to be going through the letters of Peter. There is 1 Peter or 1 Peter and 2 Peter or 2 Peter. Those are the two letters that we are going to be going through for the next few weeks. And today, we're going to look at chapter 1 of First Peter, the first letter of Peter. And the way we're going to do it today is, I, I'm not going to read a passage to you. I am going to rather take chunks of chapter 1 and talk from chunks of uh, chapter 1. My request would be that after this teaching you would go and read first peter chapter one just read the first chapter of first peter the context backdrop background of first peter is this peter wrote a letter to christians who were in diaspora and were being persecuted there were christians that were suffering going through very rough times as a result of their faith. They were persecuted 
by Romans, they were persecuted by Jews, they were persecuted by even members of their family that were not yet Christians. At that time, during the Roman Empire, as of the time of this letter, where, when we had the first and early uh, church, early uh, set of Christians, in the Roman pa Empire, the head of the household, the hus husband, had absolute authority over everyone in his household. And so if you gave your life to Christ and became a follower of, of Christ and the head of the household was not yet a follower of Christ, then you were open to persecution by that family. And there was no court that would listen to you, you know, because the head of the family had absolute authority over you and he had not yet become a follower of Christ. Now, I believe that this letter that Peter wrote to the Christians at that time applies to us today. The letters apply to us today. This particular letter applies to us today. In a time of hardship, in a time of suffering, in a time of pain, in a time where people are suffering uh, loss, economic loss, and all kinds of loss, psychological pain and trauma, the pandemic is going on, uh, people are persecuted also as a result of their faith in different parts of the world. And even here in the United States, it's becoming tough and tough to stand as a Christian. There's a price that you pay if you would truly be a Christian and stand, stand as a Christian. And there are different kinds of suffering as well that people go through. This letter would, would give us wisdom and would give us hope. And you know what? God in his infinite wisdom... It led me to schedule this teaching for this time of the year last year. So I planned out the whole year of the series that I'll be teaching on at the end of last year, not knowing what will be coming up today. But this is a good example of how God in his sovereignty, you know, leads us, directs us, uh, because he knows all, he knows the future, he knows what is, what is to come. And I want to encourage you to lean into God and, and trust him for his wisdom and the choices and decisions that you make as well. The one key thing that I would like you to walk away with, and it is the, it's the hub, is the theme, the central theme, the major idea of what I want to share this moment. And this is what it is. Christ is the source of all your blessings, future, present, and future. Christ is the source of all your blessings, present, and future. And you're going to see how that connects with, within the context of suffering and pain. You know, uh, how does Christ being the source of all your blessings help you in hard times, in difficult times, in painful times, and in moments and times of loss. A key passage, uh, a key verse for us would be verse 6 of 1 Peter chapter 1. All right, verse 6. Then verse 6, it says, So be truly glad there is wonderful joy ahead, even though you must endure many trials for a little while. So the people that Peter had written to at that time, and I believe he, he still has written to us today, because it's applicable to us and relevant to us, you know, that we're going through all kinds of trials and all kinds of hard times and all kinds of tough times. And I just explained to you what that context was for them when he wrote them that letter. So Christ is the source of all your blessings, present and future. Now to just give us uh, a sense of flow and direction, I would like to read the first few verses, the first two verses of 1 Peter. So in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 1, this letter is from Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ. I am writing to God's chosen people who are living as foreigners in the provinces of Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. God the Father knew you and chose you long ago, and His Spirit has made you holy. As a result, you have obeyed him and have been cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ. And he goes on to say, may God give you more and more grace and peace. 
and I would like to, I would like to bless you listening to me that way. May God give you more and more grace and peace. That's a powerful blessing. And we need that in times, in the times that we find ourselves in right now, more than any time before. There are two blessings that I want to talk about that come from Christ. To those who know him, who have repented of their sins and have placed their faith in him and have become followers of Jesus Christ. There are two critical blessings that would help you in a time of pain, in a time of suffering, in a time of, of difficulty, in, and even in a time of persecution. And I want to share those two blessings with you. The first blessing that I want to share with you at this moment is this. Christ has given you a new identity. Christ has given you a new identity. An identity, in summary, is who you are as against what you do, as against what you have. Even though people put their identity in what they do and in what they have, an identity pretty much is who you are. For example, I am black. That's part of my identity. You know, I am tall. That's part of my identity. I, I believe I can argue that I'm tall. <laughs> That's part of my identity. I'm a father. That's part of my identity. I'm a human being. That's part of my identity. Okay? Now, the identity, any other, any other identity that you have apart from the identity that you get from Christ in times of hardship, in times of suffering, in times of pain will crush you rather than strengthen you. The only identity that will give you strength in the midst of hardship, in the midst of pain, in the midst of persecution, is, that de is the identity that Christ gives you. The identity that Christ gives you, gives you strength in the most difficult times and moments. And any other identity, once it is affected, once it is attacked, once, you know, something happens to it that brings it down, you are undone. So if your identity is in your job, if your identity is in your money, if your identity is in your business, if your identi identity is in the relationships that you have, if anything happen to, happens to these things and destroys these things, then you are shattered. But when your identity is in Christ, when your identity is what you received from Christ, then it doesn't matter what you go through. You will find unbelievable strength even in the midst of hard times. I have been through some very tough times and some people have even asked me, have you ever doubted God and, you know, and questioned God in the midst of that? And, and I said, no. It never really occurred to me because I received an identity from him that helped me through such crisis and still helps me today. What I want us to do now is I want us to go through a number of things, examples of the identities that you receive from Christ. You receive it from Christ when you become a follower of Christ. You put your faith in him and become a follower of Christ. You receive those identities from him. And Peter gives us some of those identities. In verse 3 of 1 Peter chapter 1, it says, All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is by His grace, His great mercy, that we have been born again. We have been born again because God raised Jesus Christ from the dead. Now we live with great expectation because we have been born again. Now, I'm going to tie that to verse 17 of 1 Peter. And in verse 17 of 1 Peter, he says, And remember that the heavenly Father to whom you pray has no favorites. How did God Almighty become your heavenly Father? Because you got born again into his family. 
being born again means the you were first born as a human being and then later on you placed your faith in Jesus Christ and your spirit was reborn into the family of God so part of your identity that you receive from Jesus Christ is being born again or you could phrase it as being a child of God a member of the family of God now things could happen to my earthly family and and as a result of that I might lose them and if all my my if, if my identity is only in my earthly family and I am not proud of my earthly fam fa my earthly family or secondly something happens to my earthly family where I lose all of them I'll be shattered I'll be shattered but guess what what God has done is that because I have put my faith in him I have a new identity of being a member of his family and his family is indestructible and God as my Heavenly Father is indestructible and I am proud of him he's done so much and so many amazing things that I will ever live to be proud of him guess what that kind of understanding does in the midst of hardship that you have a father who loves you irrespective of your performance you have a father who paid the highest price by sacrificing his own son so that you could become a member of his family and escape his wrath that is amazing in in verse in verse 1 also of first Peter first Peter chapter 1 and verse 1 he says this letter is from Peter an apostle of Jesus Christ I'm writing to God's chosen people God's chosen people so part of your identity that you receive from Jesus Christ is that you are chosen you are chosen you know it reminds me of uh, as a kid growing up I'm playing soccer playing for um, um, a team in my neighborhood and when it, it will come to game time we'll you know back in Africa we play soccer every day you know and when it comes to time for selection for a game uh, m many times I'll be left out because there were other players who were way better than me and I'll be left out you know and, and I would not feel great about being left out and there were times that I'll be selected to play and I'll feel awesome I'll feel great guess what I was chosen I was cho I made the team I'm sure many of you would have experienced what it means for someone that you love or you, 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 you fell in love with to choose someone else to build a life with rather than to choose you. I'm sure many of you know what it means like to put in an, ap an application for, for something and, and maybe so many other people put in applications as well and they were only going to choose one or a few and you were chosen it, it, that feeling was great or maybe you were not one of the few that were chosen and, and you may have felt bad about it now as a child of God someone who has put his faith in Jesus Christ and has become a follower of Jesus Christ this is what it means God has chosen you and this is one of the things that would help you in hard times, in difficult times, in times of pain, in times of agony, in times of suffering, in times when people refuse you, reject you, when you remember that God, the creator of the universe, has chosen you. It doesn't matter anymore that someone else has not chosen you. And Peter understood that his audience, the people he was writing to, needed to be encouraged in their suffering, in persecution, that, so that they understood and knew that they were chosen by God. One important, um, one imp one important identity that you have is that of being a foreigner. 1 Peter 1 verse 17. And Peter said, and remember that the Heavenly Father to whom you pray has no favorites. He will judge or reward you according to what you do. So you must live in reverent fear of him during your time here as temporary 
residence. Now, you go back to verse 1. It says, this letter is from Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ. I'm writing to God's chosen people who are living as foreigners in the province of Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. He says they are living as foreigners. This world is not your home. You're meant to live here as a foreigner. When you understand that this is not home, you are just temporarily living here. A temporary resident, a foreigner in this world, and heaven is your true home. It helps you know that whatever hardship and difficulty you're going through is just for a moment. When this life here is everything to you, then sorrow and pain becomes unbearable because you have no hope beyond here. And Paul says, if we as Christians and followers of Christ have, our, have hope only for here, then we, we are of all people most miserable because there's no hope beyond now. There's no hope beyond the pain you might be going through, the suffering you might be going through. I can tell you that for many people with the pandemic, for many people who have no hope beyond this life, it, it, it must have been terrible. Almost unbearable for them. But if you're a child of God, a follower of Christ, hear me, this world is not your home. And whatever it is that you go through here, whatever pain, whatever agony, whatever suffering, whatever persecution, is just for a moment. Can you imagine? I go on a trip and I leave home. And when I'm going on that trip, I try to go with everything I have at home. It doesn't work that way, right? When I go on a trip, I know that wherever I'd be would be for a short period of time. So I only take whatever I need for that time. And then I come back home. I'm always thinking about coming back home. When I miss my family, I know it's just, it's just for a little bit and I'll be back home to my family again. Here, listen to me. When you have the mindset that you are a foreigner here on earth, this would be one of your key thoughts. That God has put you here for a reason and for a season. God has put you on earth for a reason and for a season. And the season is so that the reason would be fulfilled. And so, you believe and trust God that he'll provide all that you, you need for the season that you are here, but you know that your true home is in heaven with him. That identity of being a foreigner here comes from Jesus Christ. It comes from nowhere else but from Jesus Christ. And this is one of the blessings that we receive from Jesus Christ. The second thing, second blessing that we receive from Jesus Christ is this. Christ gives you hope. Christ gives you hope. And I want to just touch on two major characteristics of the hope that we're talking about. In verse, in verse 3, of First Peter chapter, chapter 1, it says, All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is by His great mercy that we have been born again, because God raised Jesus from the dead. Now we live with great expectation. Another version said we have living hope. As a result of Jesus Christ dying and resurrecting from the dead, we have living hope, hope that is alive, genuine hope. Hope, genuine hope is what we have. When we say, when I say genuine hope, we mean hope that never disappoints. The Bible teaches us that the hope that we have in Jesus Christ does not make us ashamed and does not disappoint. It does not disappoint. So this is one of the things that you, you blessings that you get from Jesus Christ as a result of being a member of his family, by putting your faith in him, and by following him, you get living hope. And this is what helps you endure 
all kinds of suffering. This is what makes followers of Jesus Christ cope with suffering in ways that those who do not know him can't. Because he gives us living hope. The second thing, second characteristic about this hope is that this hope is also reserved in heaven. Now, verse 4 of 1 Peter chapter 1 says, And we have a priceless inheritance, an inheritance that is kept in heaven for you, pure and undefiled, beyond the reach of change and decay. So, when you think about the story of the Israelites, God brought them out of Egypt. They were going to the promised land, to a land that God had promised them as an inheritance. When you, as a, follow, as a person, puts your faith in Christ, becomes a follower of Jesus Christ, what happens is that you become an heir of Christ. You become an heir of God. And that means you have an inheritance in God. And there's a part of the inheritance that you enjoy right here on earth, and there's a part of the inheritance that you would enjoy only when you get back home, which is heaven, to be with God. So this inheritance, this hope that we're talking about, the Bible says is reserved for you in heaven where it cannot be destroyed. There's no decay. Thieves cannot break in and steal. It is, it is, it is safe waiting for you. There can be no theft of this hope that we're talking about. There can be no decay. There can be no destruction of this hope that we are talking about. This is one of the blessings that you receive from Jesus Christ for here and for the future. So, now that you know that you have two key blessings from Christ, one which is a new identity, and two which is hope, how then should you live here on earth in the midst of tough times, in the midst of pain, in the midst of sorrow, in the midst of suffering? Peter instructs us, he instructs you, he instructs me on specific ways that we should conduct ourselves and live our lives in the light of our new identity, in the light of the hope that we have in Christ and within the context of suffering. Here are three things that he encourages you to do in this time of pain and suffering. The first thing that you need to do is to be mentally prepared to receive future gifts from Jesus Christ. Be mentally prepared to receive future gifts from Jesus Christ. So we're going to read uh, verses 13 through 16 of 1 Peter chapter 1, 13 through 16. Peter says, So prepare your minds for action and exercise self-control. Put all your hope in the gracious salvation that will come to you when Jesus Christ is revealed to the world. Put your hope in the gracious salvation that will come to you. So there's salvation that has come to you, and there's salvation that will come to you. And that is part of the future gift from God. And Peter says, be mentally prepared to receive that gift. Some of, uh, other versions will go on to say, be sober-minded. And the version that we're looking at says, exercise self-control. One would say, guard the loins of your mind. Here it says, prepare your minds for action. Why? Because something's coming. There's something that is coming that is a gift from God that would, that would complete the salvation package. Where there'll be no death, there'll be no sorrow, there'll be no suffering, there'll be no pain, there'll be no tears. 
And he says, in the light of that, prepare yourselves mentally. Think clearly. Be sharp mentally. Have a sharp mind. Think clearly. Be sober. And this means that you need to overcome all the hurts, habits, and hang-ups that, that dull your mind and, and deprive you of thinking as God would have you think. The second thing that you need to do, the second way to live in the light of your new identity and the hope that you have in Christ is be like God. God in your conduct. Be like God in your conduct. So we're going to continue. We'll, 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 we'll read verse 14 and, 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 and a couple of verses after that. So you must live as God's obedient children. Don't slip back into your old ways of living to satisfy your own desires. You didn't know any better then. But now you must be holy in everything you do, just as God who chose you is holy. For the scriptures say, you must be holy because I am holy. What this means is that God is the standard and the example of moral character or of morality. And he calls you, he calls me to live like him. He calls you, he calls me to be like him. It is so easy under pressure, the pressure of persecution, the pressure of suffering, the pressure of pain, the pressure of agony, the pressure of loss to decide not to live the way God wants you to live. You know, you go, oh, by the way, I'm going through this. Uh, I'm going to compromise. No, child of God, you and I have been called to be like God in our conduct. Be like God in your conduct. If you own a business, God is calling you to do business like God would do it. In whatever role that you have in life, whatever job that you have, whatever relationships that you're in, God is calling you to do things like he would do it. Even as a human being, he wants you to live like you had, he would have you live, like he would live. And you ask, uh, but how did God live? He, God lived as a human being in and through Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ was God living as a human being. And I get it because it's, I know it's going through your mind now that nobody can attain unto that perfection. We're called to growth. Keep on growing. Keep on following Christ and keep on growing. That's what you're called to do. When you, fall, when you fall short and sin against him, ask him for his mercy, ask him for his forgiveness and press forward. The third way to live is love others genuinely. Love others genuinely. And we'll look at verse... Verse 22, you were cleansed from your sins when you obeyed the truth. So now you must show sincere love to each other as brothers and sisters. Love each other deeply with all your heart. We are called to love each other deeply. You know, when I think of the racial tension going on, when I think of racial injustice, when I hear what people have to say, I ask myself, where is the love of God? Where is the love of God? God calls black people to love white people. God calls white people to love black people. God calls every color to love each other. In all sincerity, if we would be truthful to God and to ourselves, would you be able to say you are showing love? God calls you, God calls me to love each other. During the fall, I'm going to be doing a series on love. And again, <laughs> this was planned last year. 
not knowing what was going to be happening this year, but God knew. We're going to do a teaching on love for several weeks. And this is the time and the season that we need to hear some more about love. Would you show somebody some love? Would you reach out and demonstrate love to someone and do it genuinely? I'm going to bring this to a close now. I just want you to remember that Jesus Christ is the source of all your blessings in the present and in the future, for the present and for the future. Whatever it is that you need for today, whatever that it is that you need for the future, Jesus supplies it to you. And if you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you're a follower of Jesus Christ, he gives you the capacity and the ability to, to endure and go through suffering in a way and manner that people without him cannot and do not. And if you are listening to me this moment and you have not yet come to know Jesus Christ, you have not placed your faith in him, this is my request to you that today you would not go to bed without praying a simple prayer like this. Dear Lord Jesus, I want to know you more. I want to follow you. I put my faith in you. How much I know, for how much that I know today. Reveal more of yourself to me. In Jesus' name. And he will do that. And you'll be welcome into the family of God. God will be so excited. Angels will be so excited to have you come into the family of God. I hope you'll do that today. Before I pray, I, I want to give you an opportunity to give. It is part of worshiping God. When you take of what you have and you give, it's another way that you make a statement saying, this world is not my home. This world is not my home. It's another way that you put your treasures in heaven with God. You could just go to c6church.com and give or text to the number 940 236 0778 to give. Shall we pray? Father in heaven, thank you for a time such as this. Thank you for your word. I ask for more grace for anyone going through hardship, suffering, Lord, as a result of the pandemic or persecution. And I pray that the reality of your blessings, the reality of a new identity, the reality of hope would find expression in each person's life this week and going forward. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. And you say, amen. Amen. I love you, and I look forward to seeing you next week. Bye.